Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part four of our six-part Amiket full set review. Today we're looking at all of the red cards. Now, if you need to catch up, we have a playlist on the channel. We've looked at white, blue, and black. Tomorrow we'll be back with green, and the following day we'll return with the rest of the set. But for today, we're going to be looking at red, which is a very push color, as you're going to see as we go through these cards. This is fantastic if you're into aggro red builds at all. You're going to really love this set, and you're probably going to love where the standard meta is going as well, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Quickly, before we get started, though, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Patreon page. We're actually really close to our next goal, so if you get a chance, check that out. Secondly, we have our Amazon affiliate store. If you make any purchases of Magic products or any products, really, through the links provided, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. It goes a really long way. So thank you to everyone who's engaged in that. But also thank you to everyone who just simply watches our videos, likes, subscribes. All of it helps out a ton. So thank you to everybody. All right, let's get into the cards. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to start off with On Crop Crusher. Now, this is a 3-2 Haster for 3. I don't even need to read anymore. Sign me up. I'm happy to play this unlimited. Great aggressive card. But on top of that, when it exerts... I'm able to have a creature and not be able to block this turn. Phenomenal limited card. This is a very high pick. In some packs, this could be first pick in draft, no doubt. And I do think this could cross over into standard even, just simply because this card individually might not stand out as like, wow, constructed playable standard card. But you combine it with what Red's trying to do with some of these other cards. And I think you could have something really good on your hands here, quite honestly. So I don't know if that's going to be a mono red deck or a Rakdos aggressive deck or even a Boros deck using Always Watching to mitigate some of these exert costs, but I definitely feel like we're going to see either one or more of those type of decks show up in the meta sometime soon. Battlefield Scavenger. Uh, this is actually a fine limited card. It's a bear with upside, and Rummaging is great in aggressive builds. So I think most of the time, especially in this particular set, if you're playing red, you'll be happy to run at least one of these, and it will be good for you. Rummaging is fantastic so that you don't overhit your land drops on these aggressive builds that have a low curve, right? It basically allows you to periodically cycle away a land and try to get some more heat and because of that i think this actually has the potential to maybe even see some standard play because i do think these aggro decks are going to be extremely strong and want to cycle through their deck as quick as possible blazing volley uh, this one's okay as a limited sideboard card i mean this is nothing too exciting it's a common like this will be one of those cards you pick up towards the end of a pack and you just sideboard it in if your opponent's playing a lot of one toughness creatures if not it's not going to do anything for you Bloodlust Insider. Uh, this card's okay for a one drop. Here's the only issue with it, though. The red cards, especially the two and three drops, are so good that I don't think there's going to be room for this in most builds. If you have a good aggro draft or a good aggro seal pool, you're probably not going to run this, quite honestly. Case in point, here's Blood Range Brawler. Uh, this card is incredible. Two casting cost, four, three, Minotaur Warrior, and what's your drawback? You discard a card. Discard a card. I will discard a card all day long to play four threes on turn two. <laughs> Attack in on turn three with this. Amazing. And you know what? That discard doesn't even have to necessarily be a drawback. Just in the limited environment, you have Embalm, you have Aftermath, you have cards that get bonuses when you discard stuff. A lot of those are in black and blue. There's just a lot of things that actually mitigate that into a positive for you. And don't even get me started on standard where you have things like madness going on, right? Or even delirium trying to stock your graveyard. So there's just so much that you can do to turn that drawback into a positive And it's a 4-3 for two. I don't know what else to say about this thing. Draft, first pickable, pack one, go down that aggro path after you get this. It's phenomenal. You're going to play this in standard. This is one of those cards that is going to make that red aggressive deck one of the premier decks, I think, in standard coming up. Awesome, awesome card. I, I really don't know what else to say. Brute Strength. All right, this is a nice one of combat trick that you want in your limited deck. It's common, so you'll be able to pick it up later in the pack if you're playing draft. But you know what? Run one of these. You'll be happy with it. Anything that gives a creature trample at instant speed is a real, real nice combat trick. And you get a good buff here with plus three, plus one on the creature too. 
Other than that, it's not going to be something that will necessarily cross over into standard because you just have other effects out there that I think are going to do better to put pressure on your opponent. But for limited, this is great. By force. Well, here's one of the artifact hose cards for red. We're going to see another one coming up too. Actually, a couple more coming up. But this one is pretty economical. I mean, it is sorcery speed, but it's a X spell with one red that just takes out multiple artifacts if you need to. This set is doing a great job of just resetting the playing field and basically hosing Kaladesh pretty hard. <laughs> and that's not unusual. I mean, normally Wizards will do that because they want the new cards to have their spotlight and their time in the sun. So they give you cards like this to kind of take out the previous block. This is a very effective way of doing it. <laughs> so a couple things. For limited, this is a sideboard card. There's not a lot of great artifacts necessarily in this set. We'll look at a few in a couple days, but... For the most part, you just board this in if your opponent has a problematic one. Secondly, standard, yeah, sideboard card, especially early on in the format when people might still try to get away with playing Mardu vehicles. They're going to learn real fast, though, that that might not be a great idea. Cartouche of Zeal. Cartouches, especially the one-drop ones, I really like. The Red Trial is awesome. We're going to get there in a few minutes, but if I'm running some of those red trials, I'm happy to run one or two of these cartouches even to return them to my hand. Don't go overboard in limited. Don't dilute your deck by putting too much of the cute cartouche trial tricks in there, but maybe two trials in a cartouche could be good in certain decks. So be careful, but it's very good in limited, and I do think this one might even cross over into standard due to the fact that some of these trials are so good. Combat Celebrant. This one's a mythic. This is really strong for an aggressive deck. If you're not in an aggressive or even a maybe go wide or token version of that style deck, you might not want to play this because it's just a fragile 4-1 in that regard. But if you're in that archetype, this will be really good for you. Now, one thing I do want to point out because this caused a little confusion when the card was premiered. When you exert this, it does give you another combat step but you can exert it again. So if you find a way to untap it before the next combat step or something like that, if you try to exert again, it's not going to create another combat step because of the way the card's worded, you can only do it the first time you exert it that turn. You would have to actually like clone it or something like that and make another copy to get an additional combat step. So having said that aside, great card. Again, it's going to be good in limited, maybe a high draft pick as long as you're really all in on the aggro theme. Sometimes it won't make your cut, though, if you're doing something else. Standard, another piece to that aggro puzzle. It's almost like they're building the deck for us, quite honestly. Consuming Fervor. This is interesting to me because it's very similar to Unstable Mutation, which had its day in the spotlight. Like, you go back a number of years in the early days of Magic, and Unstable Mutation saw a lot of competitive, constructed play. <laughs> so I kind of wonder about this card because Magic's changed a lot since then. But this is a nice, like, plus three, plus three on a creature for just one mana. If you're putting it on a creature with evasion or perhaps trample, could be a lot of damage going across early. Problem is, you can get two for one relatively easily. It's not really giving you any other benefit for using the aura. Because of that, I don't think it's going to translate well into today's standard. And I might even pass it up in limited a lot of the time, unless I maybe sideboard it in in game two. If I think my opponent doesn't have a lot of good removal, that might be a different story. But I don't know if I start off with this in my deck. I just really don't want the two for one, even though there's a potential high upside to this card. Deem worthy. This is fine limited removal. It can hit a player, but doing seven damage to a creature is going to deal with most threats out there. And a lot of times you don't need to do seven damage. You just need to deal with a small creature that has a good ability. And if that's the case, you can cycle this for four and get rid of that creature. I like that versatility. This could be a pretty high pick too in a draft. Desert Ceridon. I'm not super thrilled with this one, mostly because it costs six for the six four. Like if it was five, I'd probably be on board a little more, but... By the time you play this, it gets chump blocked by like small creatures or else worse yet, like two two twos that are sitting there not able to do anything in a gummed up board state can just kill this thing. Now, yes, it does have cycling and you can get rid of it and replace it in those situations, but I think you'll find yourself cycling it most of the time anyway, so why bother running it? Electrify, another good limited direct damage spell. Again, it can't hit players, but this one's at instant speed for four and it can take out a lot of the bigger threats in the format. Definitely a high pick, maybe even first pickable in a lot of packs. 
as far as standard goes, it could see a little standard play. I mean, there's some better direct damage spells out there that might edge this one out, but I wouldn't be shocked if it showed up as maybe a one of or two of here and there. Next, we have Emberhorn Minotaur, and this is a nice limited beater. Like a 4-3 for 4 is really economical. A lot of times you pay 4 for a 3-3, three, three. and on top of it, you get the exert effect where it can gain menace and plus 1, plus 1 to end a turn as well. So you get upside on top of it. Yeah, I'm happy to play this in my 4 spot, especially in an aggressive build. Flameblade Adept. I mentioned this card yesterday briefly when I was talking about possible combos, but the card itself, 1-2 for a 1-drop Menace, that's actually decent. You know that 1-drop Menace cards are going to get at least a little bit of damage across, and then the fact that whenever you cycle or discard, it gets a temporary buff to its power too is kind of nice. It almost feels a little prowess-esque as well in a way. And those type of cards do well in limited. So this is maybe one of the better one drops that you're going to find in the set, quite honestly. I mean, it's nothing that's going to win you the game, but it gets you that early damage across before you really get your other aggro components moving. And there are a lot of interesting combos, especially in blue and black, where cycling does tend to matter a little more. Next we have Fling, which is a reprint, but this has been a very successful card in competitive magic in the past. And I think it will be again this summer. As far as limited goes, this is a high pick. A lot of packs, this will be a first pick. Yes, it's a little contingent on board state. However, the fact that you can target a opponent or creature with this is a pretty big deal. It's a common. You're going to find a lot of these floating around. You might even be able to get two, even three in a draft if you're super lucky. That could get a little bit crazy with the right build. Constructed, standard, yeah, you know what? This will definitely see play, I have no doubt. This is a nice piece to that aggressive deck to hopefully finish out the game. Now, there's a few different tricks to either ramp into big creatures or buff creatures through discard or what have you right now. That could come into play too at certain points in standard. Now, in the past, we've seen this very successfully paired with ATOG. ATOG basically just ate a bunch of your artifacts, got big, and then you would fling it at your opponent. And that was very successful in its day. We actually have a ATOG variant currently from the Kaladesh block. Those cards could get paired up again. The only thing that combo has going against it now is there's so much artifact hate currently that that combo might be hard to get going. But there's still plenty of other great things you're going to be able to do with this card regardless. So yeah, this is a huge inclusion. It's going to definitely affect the standard environment for some time to come. Glorious End. Now this one's a mythic. This is a weird card, but I really like it. it it's actually not too strange because we've had variants of Time Walk and Red in the past that make you lose the game. That's basically what this is. Even though it doesn't say take an extra turn after this one, basically ending your opponent's turn at any time at instant speed, you're just basically canceling their turn and taking another turn is really what this amounts to. And if you can't win the game after that next turn, or you can't put something into play that says you don't lose the game, <laughs> then you're going to lose. This card is good in two scenarios. One, you have a combo deck where you know your combo is going to go off and you're going to win next turn and you just want to shut down your opponent's turn or maybe they play something problematic and you just shut down their turn and you win the game. The other way this works is if you have something that says you can't lose the game. Now we have the new Gideon. If you have Gideon and an emblem out, then you can't lose the game. So this becomes basically a three mana time walk. That's really good. Problem with that and limited is those are two mythics and <laughs> that's simply not going to happen. And if it does, you're very, very lucky. And even if you do get those two cards, you still have to get them to kind of come out in the right order and the stars and the moon have to align. So it's not going to be great there. So if you don't play this in limited, where does it end up? Well, you could try to brew Gideon Tribal and Standard and use it as a time walk there. I think someone's going to try to work that out again. I'm not convinced Gideon Tribal is going to necessarily be able to get there, especially considering the efficiency of some of the decks we've already seen in Standard, and at least the brews that you can kind of start to put together from what we've seen from the set and just how fast they could be. I just don't know if that deck's going to quite be fast enough. You look at Modern, you do have things like the Unlife decks, like do you think this could slide into there. I mean, does that deck need this, I guess is the question. So it's going to be interesting. Time's going to tell on this one. Someone will find something fun to do with it, no doubt, with a 
situation with like a platinum angel type effect right but at least for right now in the immediate future i think this is a cool commander card because i think there's a lot of interesting commander interactions you could do with this a lot of platinum angel style effects out there they can mess around with and in that case this could just be a fun commander card but i do think at some point someone will find something a little more tangible to do with it glory bringer great aggressive card again i feel like i've been saying that all day but here's another one four four flying haste for five yeah you know what i don't even need to read anymore but if i do i can exert this and do four damage to a non-dragon creature and opponent controls it could simply come down for five attack in exert take out a big creature and get in for damage or maybe make the opponent chump block this will be fantastic for you in standard and it is easily first pickable in draft great limited card Next we have Harsh Mentor. I actually like this card a lot. I typically don't like the Punisher mechanic cards where my opponent gets to decide how bad it's going to be for them because they're always going to decide to do what's best for them, right? And that takes some of the power away from the card. However, this one only costs two and you're still getting a 2-2, so I don't hate the fact that it's not always going to set up the best situation for me. My opponent is going to simply be able to say, okay, if activating the ability is worth it, then I'll take the two damage. If it's not, I won't take the two damage. And that gives them a lot of power over this card. Having said that though, like I said, it's still a two, two for two. So that other side is just upside. And that's actually pretty interesting. It might not always make your cut because there are so many good aggressive red cards. If you're trying to be more aggressive, then you might have just better stuff to do, especially if your opponent is on a really creature heavy deck, which you're going to see a lot in limited, especially sealed. It's just going to be a lot of creatures running into each other a lot of the time. So this card loses a lot of its luster, I think, in those situations. But maybe you board it in if your opponent is playing things that have more activated abilities of interest to you. Where I think this really shines, though, is perhaps standard, but definitely modern. Like, I feel like this is maybe one of the best modern cards in the set because you pair this in an aggressive red deck with Eidolon and you burn a little bit. You attack in with your Goblin Guide and maybe I could see this in Naya Burn, actually. And then your opponent is going to say crack a fetch land to try to get their mana base. And they're taking three damage just off one harsh mentor on the battlefield. And if you have two, it's five damage. <laughs> like that starts to become backbreaking very, very quickly. So yeah, I think this card is going to be very good in modern. Hezzeret's Favor. Uh, this one I'm not real excited about. Like here's my problem with the card simply. It's an enchantment for three. It does nothing on its own. It's relying on you having creatures to attack with and having good combat situations to attack into. <laughs> Now, if you have all that going for you, then you might be able to get a few points of damage out of this card, but then you're sacrificing your board state to do it, and it's only working basically for one creature at a time. If this was buffing two or three creatures or multiple creatures, that'd be a little bit different maybe, but the way it stands, I just can't get behind this. I'd rather just play a three-drop creature. I think I'm going to get more economy out of that than I am from something like this. Hezzeret the Fervent. Uh, here's the red god, and much like the other gods, I mean, this is a little niche. Like, this card wants to be in a certain style of deck. In other styles of deck, it's not very good, but in the particular style where it's really designed to fit, it's amazing. And for this card, luckily for all of us, it's aggro. <laughs> aggro is definitely where red is going. That's where its head is in this set. This card really is the icing on the cake. Now, look at it this way. If this was an enchantment that's a red and three and it said pay a red and two, discard a card, deal two damage to each opponent, I'd play the card. In fact, I'd probably still first pick the card. It's really, really good. It lets you pitch cards to do direct damage to opponents. Phenomenal. Now, if I'm in an aggressive build and I'm trying to dump my hand fast, put out my small creatures, burn to the face, all that stuff... Then this 5-4 indestructible haste creature is going to become that much better. What's nice too is in these aggro decks, when you flood out on land, this gives you a source of damage from those lands. That's pretty awesome too. This card will definitely see standard play. It's going to fit very well in these low curve aggro decks for sure. And I think this could even maybe see some modern play potentially just because of that 
this card to get rid of the cards that aren't helping you ability. That could be quite good in certain circumstances. So I think it has some potential there. It's an interesting card because it's so good in that archetype and it's so bad in others. Like you don't want to play this in a control deck or something like that, right? Uh, finally, as for limited, it's first pickable. I mean, like I said, this is going to be great for you regardless because even the ability is good. Even if you can't turn the creature portion on to attack and block, the ability is going to find you value for four mana, and it's actually worth running, I think. Heart Piercer Mana Core. This is another like good creature, a four drop, four three, that has fling built into it, and you can embalm and then later do it all again. <laughs> like That's amazing. So again, it's a little situational, and it's a little dependent on board state. And because of that, I don't think you're going to see it in standard. I think people will just play fling because it's a little more versatile and you don't have to worry necessarily about having four mana two on color to kind of make this happen at the right time so i don't see it there but limited i think it's still a high pick like i might even first pick this in probably many packs hyena pack uh, not a lot to say about this one it's amazing that this costs the same as the previous card but this is a fine four drop in red if you need it in limited if you're trying to just beef out your curve but other than that it might not always make your cut Insult to Injury. It's like they're building this deck for us. Now this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> insult and Injury, I feel like could have been flipped. I feel like Injury could have been like the main portion. Insult could have been the aftermath portion, but it's not. Insult's doing double damage at sorcery speed and also shutting off any ability that could prevent damage for the turn. <laughs> That's insane. It will see standard play. This is good for you and limited another super good aggressive card to back up all your aggressive creatures and you know what the injury part's great too i mean doing two damage to a creature and taking out something with a problematic effect and also doing two damage to your opponents that's awesome so another just amazing card limits of solidarity this is probably more for limited but it's going to be good for you there i love these threatened effects and i love them with cycling because there are times when maybe the board state isn't conducive to you doing this so you can cycle it away but if you have this and maybe like a sack outlet like the Black God or something like that, this card becomes even better. Steal a creature, tack in, go ahead and sacrifice it for value. It gets pretty crazy pretty quick. So I, I love these effects. These can really help put away a game in limited. Usually you don't want to run more than one of them. You don't want to clog your deck up too much with these because they are a little situational, but they're very good. Magma Spray. Another good limited just small burn spell one casting cost instance i mean super economical doing two to a creature and then oh by the way if the creature dies you get to exile it so it does get around some embalm hijinks and stuff like that and if embalm has a decent footprint in standard this could cross over into some standard play too maybe out of sideboards Manticore of the Gauntlets. Uh, this is a fine creature for limited. It's nothing too exciting, but it does do three points of damage directly to your opponent when it enters the battlefield, which is kind of nice. And there are some abilities that are bouncing spells and stuff in blue, so you could potentially play this more than once over the course of a game. That could do a little damage over time for sure. I'm not running this maybe in all of my builds, but if I have some things that combo well with it, I may run it. The minus one, minus one counter that you have to play on something you control from this card is a drawback, I guess, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Even if this thing was a four, three for five, that's doing three damage. I think it's still economical enough and limited. Minotaur Sure Shot. Uh, nothing super exciting about this card, but it has a reach. And because of that, I am very apt to play this in my limited deck a lot of the time because red just doesn't have a lot of answers for flyers. Basically, it's direct damage or something like this. But especially small flyers where you don't necessarily want to play a big burn spell on them or one of your really good burn spells because you're saving it for something stronger, then this is a nice way to just mitigate that early damage. Maybe you don't start off with it in your deck. Perhaps you side it in once you see your opponents playing some little flyers or something like that. But I always like these cards. I'm glad they exist. Nef Crop Entangler. I don't see this one crossing over into standard. I think it's maybe a little too slow there, but this is fine for limited. A 2-1 for 2. It has Trample, and you can exert it as a 3-3. So you can get some early damage with this card. It's decent. Two drops are usually the medius in the most important part of your limited curve so i'm a little apt to play some that are a little more borderline in limited because it just fills out your curve so well 
Nimble Blade, Kenra, almost the same story as this last card. Kind of a borderline two drop, like definitely good enough to play in limited and you'll be happy with it. It's not going to do anything in standard or anything like that. But this one's a nice blocker. It's a little bit less of an aggro card than maybe some of the other ones. This plays a little bit better with maybe a slower, more controlling deck. But you know what? That prowess can be decent at times as well. Pathmaker Initiates, these type of cards have been printed a few times in the history of Magic, and sometimes they end up being very powerful. They can be good in some limited builds if you have a lot of ways to pump your creatures up after the fact, because you can make something unblockable, basically, and then after it's not able to be blocked, you can pump it up to a larger power, and sometimes you get away with one there. I don't mind running, like, one of these in my deck. Pursue Glory. Uh, this is another limited card, and it's going to be just fine. Obviously, it's better if you can go wide. If you have a lot of like creature tokens or something like that, and you know you're going to be able to put away a game with this, it becomes phenomenal. I really like the cycling here because if the board state isn't going your way, you can cycle this away and try to get something else to maybe improve the board state. So definitely good. It's not for every build, but if you think you're going to be able to go wide and get some extra damage across, well, one of is, is decent in a lot of the limited decks. Soul Scar Mage. Now here's a very good one drop. Maybe one of the better ones in the set again. One red for a 1-2 with prowess. That alone is actually pretty intriguing to me. But now all your non-combat damage gets done in the form of minus one, minus one counters. Almost like Wither, if you remember Wither back in the old days. So that's kind of cool because it deals with indestructible creatures or helps you whittle down a large creature with a spell that might not necessarily be able to kill it. And you get all of this extra upside for a one drop. One drops with this much upside, I have no doubt we'll see standard play, maybe even modern play in the right deck if somebody wants to brew something around this concept. I wouldn't be totally shocked. As far as limited goes, yeah, you know what? I'll play this in limited and I'm going to be pretty happy with it, especially considering I'm sure I'll have at least a few good burn spells in my deck. Sweltering Sun. Well, speaking of a good spell, <laughs> uh, okay, it's not Anger of the Gods. It doesn't exile things, unfortunately. However, this thing is still awesome. Three damage to each creature, and you know what? If I'm ahead and I don't need to do that and I just want to keep the pressure on, I can cycle this thing away if I want and maybe get another beater to get down on the ground and get damage across. Fantastic card. Easily, easily we'll see standard play. Maybe not modern play because they have Anger of the Gods, but this will be a big standard card, and this is very first pickable in draft. Thresher Lizard. Decent card again for limited. 3-2 three, for 3. Very economical stats. I'm happy with that. Then later in the game, when I get my hand size down, it's a 4-4. Four, four. It can hang with some bigger creatures. A lot of times this will trade up. Tormenting Voice. Now, this is the card they will not let die. It gets reprinted like every block, and here it is again. But it's a fine card. Like, it has seen some standard play in its day, so it could again. And as far as Limited goes, I play this card in Limited, and I'm usually happy with it. It's going to be good in aggressive decks. It's not really card draw as much as it's like double cycling in some ways. Like, you pitch something, you don't need like an extra land, you pitch this, you get two new cards. But again, discarding a card can be a benefit a lot of the time. Again, you could discard something that you can play from your graveyard, or you could be playing one of those cards or a number of those cards that give you a benefit for cycling or discarding. So it kind of fits in here. Totally makes sense. It could be better in some builds than others, but I'm usually happy to run one of these, especially if I'm in an aggro build. All right, Trial of Zeal. Now this is actually a great direct damage spell. I get it, it's not Lightning Bolt, it's not Lightning Strike, but it's what we got. And it's actually strong enough, for sure. Three damage to a creature or player for three. I think that's actually very, very good in this current environment. And oh, by the way, if you play a cartouche, this comes back to your hand, you get to do it again. What's really cool about these is let's say I put four of these in my deck, maybe I play two or three of them, then I play a cartouche and they go back to my hand and I get to do it all over again. One cartouche will return all the trials to your hand. That's kind of crazy. Maybe a little counterintuitive with some of these cards I want you to get sort of kind of hellbent, but at the same time, who cares? You're doing three damage to other stuff, probably your opponent at that point, and you're most likely winning the game. This will definitely see standard play. This is going to be quite good there. And yes, this is very, very playable and limited in draft. I could see this as a first pick some of the time. True Heart Twins. Uh, this is fine if you have a lot of exert in your limited deck. Like if I don't, 
I'm not going to go crazy trying to work this into my build or anything like that. It might not make my cut, but if I have some exert, I think there's enough extra value there to try to run one. Violent Impact, basically a demolish with cycling? That seems actually pretty interesting to me. Well, first off, it deals with artifacts, another artifact hose card. <laughs> but secondly, Demolish is one of those cards that is usually a sideboard card for me in Limited because I always feel like if my opponent doesn't have a good artifact and they don't get stuck on land and they're not getting super greedy on colors, Demolish isn't great when it comes late. Now, if your opponent stumbles on land, it's awesome. Or if there is a difficult artifact that you gotta deal with, you're happy to have it. Or if your opponent's going super greedy and trying to go three or even four colors, sometimes you can take them off that plan real quick with this card. So usually I sideboard it in for those situations. This card though, doesn't punish you for main decking it or even sideboarding it in and not being in a game state where it's relevant because you can cycle it away. And I think that adds a lot to the power level of this card. So again, I don't see this necessarily crossing over into standard or anything, but I do think this is a better limited card than Demolish for sure. Actually by leaps and bounds, it is much more main deckable. I probably don't want more than one or anything like that, but it's a fine pickup maybe later in a pack. Warfire Javelin Ear. I'm not real excited about this one. I rarely see myself playing this. The only reason I might play it in Limited is if I have a lot of instants and sorceries. Like maybe I'm in Izzet and I have a lot of burn and counter or something like that. This card becomes a little bit better, but I don't want to pay for for a 2 3 that has an upside that's just too contingent upon what's in my graveyard, especially instants and sorceries in Limited, which many times is going to be more of a creature based game. So, yeah, it has its role, don't get me wrong. It's not unplayable, but it's not going to make my cut most of the time. Having said that, those are the cards for today. We're going to be back tomorrow with the green, and then we'll wrap things up the next day with the rest of the set. Now, like I said in the other videos, these are just simply my opinions, and it's all about what cards are fun for you. I mean, don't worry if I say something's not as good as something else, because at the end of the day, Play with the cards that you enjoy. I mean, we all have different styles that we gravitate to, and a lot of folks can do better with a card that maybe I want to do great with because I'm not used to playing that style of card or that style of deck. So don't get too caught up on that stuff. Just have fun when you go to the pre-release. Play the cards that are fun for you, and if you're having a good time and you're playing with cards you're comfortable with, I think you have a better chance of winning than trying to create a deck of cards that maybe I said were good <laughs> that you're not used to playing with. So just at the end of the day, keep that in mind. Have a good time. Have fun this weekend. That's what it's all about. And until tomorrow, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.